Hey, what's going on everybody? We are back in front of these beautiful flags and today we're talking about the brand new Smith & Wesson Volunteer. So what is the Volunteer? Uh, well, at least this configuration is more of a basic entry level style of rifle, much like the Sport 2 and previous Sport models that uh, Smith & Wesson has offered. The thing that is different with this is, well, there's a couple things, but there's also very much the same. However, the price is increased from the sport models, and is it worth it? Stay tuned, maybe you find out. But in the meantime, brand new gun. There's not a whole, whole bunch of media out on this other than what Smith & Wesson has put out themselves. And there's also a really, really good video uh, from Sean M. Tactical that I'm going to be referencing later in this one. Uh, I will rem if I remember, I'll link it in the, uh, in the comment section below. But Go check him out. Shout out to him. He has no idea I exist. It looks like he's somewhat of a newer channel, but he's put out some really good information uh, on the actual specs and dimensions and how this thing's actually built, and I learned a lot from watching the video. So anyway, this is just an initial impressions video, by the way. Uh, I have not shot this gun. I picked it up not too long ago, and it's kind of just been sitting. Throw it on the pile with the other ones. Uh, but I bought it for a specific reason, and uh, that's just to have a simple, plain, no-frills rifle that I'm probably going to be able to count on. Uh, obviously, I say probably because not having shot this, who knows, it might be a lemon. Uh, and no matter what company you're purchasing a firearm from, from Smith & Wesson to Glock all the way up to Geisley or, you know, whoever, you know, and anywhere in between, Wilson Combat, whatever... They might have the name, they might have the reputation, but until you vet it, I wouldn't wholeheartedly trust it, especially if it's being used for life and liberty. Okay, that's what it's all about. So further digressing, as I tend to do here on the channel, uh, you guys are checking out the rifle, checking it out. You're, you're peeping it. Maybe you've seen it in other videos or online, um, and you're seeing it. It looks, you know, it doesn't look bad. It's not a bad looking gun. Uh, but it is a basic gun for sure out of the box. And speaking of the box, let's show you the box and what you get. Trust me, it's not that impressive. Here's the box, people. <laughs> it is quite literally a cardboard box. Smith & Wesson M&P branded America. Love America. Um, but it is quite literally a cardboard box with some foam in it. Let's get that junk out of here. Uh, what else do you get? Well, you get one Magpul Gen 2 PMAG as shown in the rifle. You don't need that anymore. You get your manual. Okay, these things, while none of us probably ever read these things, it is good to have. You should probably reference it. You should probably read it, uh, especially if you are new to all this. Now, bear in mind, too, there's going to be a lot of times in firearms manuals where they tell you, don't do this, don't do that, whatever. They're just saying that to cover their asses, and in fact, you can definitely do certain things, but just do your own research, okay? Uh, not a lawyer, but manual, whatever. You get a lock, okay? I don't ever use these things, ever, at least not for guns, but if you do need to lock up the gun, you got little ones, whatever, maybe your state requires you, okay? It comes with a lock. It's from lockdown, um solid good enough whatever i mean this is not impenetrable by any means and this is not most of the time going to make you safer uh it's going to make it a lot more difficult to access the firearm you need in a life or death situ situation god forbid that ever happens if you're storing your guns like this anyway let's get that out of here and then warranty card information um you can send it in you cannot smith and wesson products have lifetime warranties on them at least to the original owner now maybe down the line they say oh well you never sent in your warranty card so then you're not going to get help and i don't know but registration always leads to confiscation so back to the rifle the smith and wesson volunteer uh i personally like to think that they named it the volunteer after what happened with uh the Kenosha kid, he was out there volunteering his time, making his community safer and better and protecting innocent lives and businesses and property and, you know, just being a true American, which if you don't have one of these, it's hard to be a true American because this is, uh, this is what you're going to need to defend life and liberty, people, or something similar. Uh, but I like to think, probably not, but I like to think that, you know, Smith & Wesson named this the volunteer because the old Kenosha kid was using a Smith rifle.
It was a Smith Sport 2 Optics Ready, I believe, with a sight mark, uh, sight mark dot on it. And uh, works. Combat proven, technically. Uh, so shout out to the Kenosha Kid. And remember, never bring a skateboard to a gunfight. Shout out to We The People Holsters, by the way, for sending out the hoodie. Uh, awesome. They've also sent me a few holsters, and they all work really, really well. And the cool thing about them is they make a huge, huge selection. Uh, whatever handgun you got, they probably got a holster for it. Not a paid endorsement. You know, they, they're not a sponsor of this video. Um, but I have found that for some of the weird guns, they make holsters for them. And their holsters are up to par as far as everyday piece of kit. Uh, you can find them in the link in the link tree uh, under gear, holsters, all that stuff if you want to check them out. But shout out to them because they're making cool merch. They're making cool rigs for your pistols. And you got to carry your pistols. We're talking about rifles, but you got to carry your pistols. It's not the most practical to have that every place you go. So you leave it at home. Don't leave your handgun at home, people. Take it with. We the people, Harry's holsters, somebody, carry your guns. Anyway, back to the gun that you guys came here to check out. Um, like we talked about it, basic gun. Okay, we've got B5 Systems furniture on the gun. So I'm a huge fan of the B5 Systems pistol grips. The angle that it, it is at, it's, you know, it's a rather steep angle. And uh, as far as like a, a super aggressive angle like you have on an A2, and for me and for most people, uh, it's very, very comfortable. Also, the texturing, the stippling that they put on these grips give you a look it's really nice and aggressive it bites it's not going to rub you raw but it bites and it gives you good traction to control that gun and do what you need to do with it uh b5 system stock it's like a sop mod-esque stock this one specifically does not have the battery compartments the storage compartments it does have qd swivels on it it is adjustable you know minimal wiggle it's got a nice broad uh area for your cheek it's comfortable but also a little bit heavier than per se a standard magpul moe or even a CTR, perhaps. Um, standard single-sided controls, okay? It's not set up ambidextrously out of the box. This is one of their basic models, uh, the most basic model when you're talking about the Volunteer Series, but there is definitely some upgrades above, like, a standard Smith & Wesson m and Sport 2, or something like that. Comes with a Magpul flip-up rear, polymer, Magpul backup sight. No problem with them whatsoever. I typically, myself, prefer running uh, the Pros. They're steel. They're more durable. They're going to lay flat around the rail. And as well, the front sight is a lot more precise with the thinner posts that the Pros have. But A2 standard front post sight, you know, it, mil spec, nothing wrong with it. Uh, in fact, probably one of the strongest and most durable parts and pieces of an AR-15 is the A2 front post. And it doesn't bother me. I'm not going to put a magnified optic on this rifle. I'm probably most likely going to leave it iron sights. One of the reasons why I bought the gun, just to have a basic carbine laying around that's easy. Here's a gun. Um, here's how to use it, shoot it, whatever. And uh, that can be quite effective. Okay, a simple gun with less stuff to go wrong. Not a bad idea sometimes, and that's kind of what you get uh, with this series from Smith on the Volunteer, at least this model again being their most entry-level model. Going forward on the upper of the rifle, uh, we do have a B5 Systems M-Lock uh, carbine length handguard here, okay? It's not free-floated, obviously we have the A2, um, but, you know, a solid, nice, slim handguard. I like the feel of it. It's got good texture on it. You can kind of hear that, or at least I hope you can. And so it's good, positive texture, just like all their stuff, all their grips. And it does help you lock in. Uh, modern shooting stance with a C-clamp, okay? It's nice and slender. It's not big and chunky like the old M4 ones. So you can definitely get a nice purchase on the gun and do what you have to do from there. Um, it does have featured M-Lock slots. And you see here that I put a pick... Um, slot a little m-lock pick rail adapter on there um because i'm probably just going to run like a little pistol light or something off this canted in a c-clamp i'll be able to toggle whether it's the levers on like a streamlight tlr1 hl or a surefire x300 or whatever it is um could run a rifle light i still might do that might even take this off and mess with uh, those arasaka light bars or the things that like t-rex arm cells that pushes the light up a little bit forward since i'm running a carbine length handguard and uh, i'm going to get a lot of splash off the barrel uh, from the light hanging it off the right side 
But either way, you have M-Lock slots available to you here. Uh, they're not directly on the side, which some people are not going to like, but honestly, running a canted light where it's a little bit more in line, up and out of the way, is preferable to me anyway. And then, of course, you have the slots on the bottom for any foregrips, AFGs, whatever you want to put on there. Going up from there... Okay, we have a one in eight twist rifle for five or rifled barrel for five five six, and it has five R rifling. Five R rifling is what you want. Okay, they took it away from you in the Sport Two. They originally had it on the first generation of M and P Sport rifles, and now they're bringing it back to you with the Volunteer. It's also been offered on like their higher end military law enforcement grade guns, just the standard M and Ps, M and P fifteens, not the Sport series. Uh, for some time, like with the M&P Tacticals and stuff like that. It's a really, really good barrel. You're going to get better longevity out of it. Um, real nice melanite finish. Smith & Wesson calls it Armanite, but it's melanite. It's an impregnation of the metal, so it's even going to be protected if it gets scratched or scuffed or scraped or whatever. Um, and 1 and 8 twist will definitely balance a wider variety of loads. You don't have to worry about shooting 55s versus 77s or 62s. It'll balance pretty much all of them effectively enough and then topped off with just a standard A2 birdcage flash hider. No big deal. You do have your bayonet lug, which is cool. Sling mount up front to go with the QD in the back of the B5. And uh, let's talk about the lower. But before we do that, we're going to have to talk about the bolt, which is something that I forgot to talk about earlier. Um, and sh again, shout out to Sean M. Tactical. Uh, he's a growing channel. Make sure you go over there, give him a sub, tell him I sent you, whatever. Um, but check out his content because it's really, really interesting. He even spec'd out the dimension of the gas port and all that. I believe it was 0.65 or something like that. So a little bit looser tolerance, but he says and as we all well know that, uh, you know, they do that. The more gas you get, the more reliable it's going to be. You're also going to get, you know, more dirt and debris, and it's going to have more recoil. Again, it's a carbine length gun. Um, speaking of which, too, the buffer uh, is a standard carbine buffer with carbine uh, springs in there. And, uh, you know, maybe you want to go to an H1 or an H or something like that. But either way, no big deal. It'll run for most people that are buying these guns, they're probably never going to shoot them enough to tell the difference, which is a shame and should change, but it's probably not going to anytime soon. Although we are winning, gun culture is rising, and make sure you come along with for the journey. But anyway, back to the bolt. Uh, he's miking out the bolts first. It's MP tested, so it's magnetical particle inspected and all that stuff. It's properly staked. It's good to go. Uh, he was specking out the tolerances on the bolt itself, and he says they're extremely tight. They're very, the variances within, you know, one to another or whatever are, are legit, and it's, it's a higher quality bolt than you are getting with the Sport 2 guns. Uh, so you're getting a, a much better bolt and a much better barrel with the Volunteer series. And again, this is just their basic entry level model out of that series. So with those two upgrades alone, because those two things, the bolt and the rifle, uh, the bolt and the barrel, I should say, uh, are the heart of the rifle. So having those being better quality, again, with the 5R, you're going to have better accuracy potential, longer barrel life, great finish on the barrel. I'm pretty sure they put the same arm and I finish on the sport guns too, but either way, and then having the upgraded bolt again, he said, you know, he just had one. Uh, so he was going off of that, but he's the only one putting out that information uh, that I've seen from the digging I've done. So it seems to be an actual upgrade. They're not just slapping a flat face trigger and some furniture and stuff on it and calling it something different. That being said, let's get to talking about the lower. So the lower standard lower okay there's only a few forgeries that make everybody's stuff when it comes to ar-15 upper and lower receivers and stuff like that so bear that in mind when you're buying rifles um ar-15 stuff like that for the most part the basic components are all going to be relatively on par with each other again it matters more the barrel the bolt bolt carrier group stuff like that the heart uh, of the components of the rifle that are really what are making this thing run the little shells that we put the pieces in and whatever uh, not the biggest deal at the end of the world um, that being said I've seen Paul Meadows crack and it looks like pop metal on the inside um, supposedly the poverty pony Anderson manufacturings are all forged 
uh, where like PSA stuff is cast and different companies are using cast stuff. Then there's billet, there's forge, there's all types of stuff. Um, the Smith, the Smith guns are, I don't know what they are. I'm sure it's some kind of, you know, cut in a corner esque thing because they're such a big company and, um, you know, their production is just, they, they're pumping out a bunch of guns all the time. But that being said, I had a sport too. Uh, it was my first AR that I bought and it shot thousands and thousands of rounds of cheap Tula steel case ammo and never once had a failure deliver delivered those rounds accurately on target and held up i never had a problem with any part of that gun whatsoever and uh, i would expect much the same with this volunteer and it being a little bit of a nicer rifle more of an upgrade off the jump that being said what is not really upgraded or one could argue is kind of sort of upgraded but not really is the trigger um Flat face trigger, beautiful, looks cool. It is set back a little bit further into the receiver, so uh, that might help with some people's trigger reach on the uh, on the gun, on the trigger, whatever it may be. Uh, it might be a little bit more ergonomic for you. And then, of course, the flat face. A lot of people are liking that. Not only the look, but it does give you better leverage, um, no matter on which you know area of the trigger that you're pulling it from or pressing it from. Um, but of course, at the bottom, you're probably going to have the most because that's just how levers work. Either way, let's uh, <clears throat> let's try that trigger here. Let's do our best Garand thumb impression. So, right here, right here, little bit of take up, but you hear? Can you hear that? And now it's actually stuck back. It's creaky. It's creepy. It's clunky. There's another little clunk. And then it breaks. That being said, it breaks around five pounds. Um, and it's crisp-ish once you get to the break of it. Reset's not awful. It doesn't really push your finger back out super hard. Um, but not bad. Little creep, mush, break. Again, the reset. I'd like that, I'd like that return spring to be a little bit stiffer. Um... And it is a kind of a gritty trigger. It's a mil-spec Sport 2 trigger with a flat face shoe on it is literally what it is. Um, no other way about it. Uh, it. Would I rather have this than the standard one? Sure, of course. It looks cooler. The trigger reach is nice. The leverage on the flat face trigger is nice. Um, and I think it adds a little bit of benefit, but... It's not a special trip trigger. It's not a Geisley Super 3 gun. It's not a Wilson Combat TDI or TDI, TDI or what? TDI? I don't know, whatever the Wilson Combat one. It's not any of that. It's not a Timney. It's not a, a LaRue. It's a Sport 2 trigger with a shoe. So, Poet didn't even know it. But yeah, it's not bad. As far as the standard components, again, mil-spec buffer tube, everything is mil-spec and or technically better-ish, right? We can consider, you know, a lot of civilian... Uh, ask guns to be above mil spec because mil spec at the end of the day is just the cheapest parts with the highest quality you can get for that money and so a lot of times on the civilian market you can get a better rifle a more accurate rifle um you know forged parts as opposed to cast or mim or, or whatever it may be and uh <clears throat> do we have that here do we have that here i don't know so is the volunteer rifle from smith uh, or at least this basic model from, you know, out of the box, you know, nothing special. They do have higher end models available in this line. Is this worth the extra money in this configuration? This one specifically, uh, you know, basic entry level model compared to the Sport 2. Uh, is it a good buy? Should you consider buying this as opposed to other things on the market in its price point, which again, is around $1,000, give or take. Now, I work in a gun shop, so I get things a little bit cheaper, and, uh, you know, it wasn't crazy money for this, so, and you can find them on the street, too, for around $800, $850, maybe, maybe $899, depending on where you're going, um, but for that money, being, you know, $150, $200 bucks more than the Sport 2 option, is it a better gun? Uh, off the bat, again, not having put a single round through this gun, just out of the box initial impressions, I think it is. The 5R rifle barrel, uh, I was mad when they took that away from the original sports. Uh, I wasn't able to catch one of those, and uh, I got ended up with a Sport 2. 
and it didn't have that. And I heard nothing but great things about the 5R rifle barrel, and there is validity to that. Uh, we're not going to talk about it necessarily here, and I'm no subject matter expert, but you can look into it for yourself. From what I understand, it's something nice to have. Uh, again, shout out to Sean M. Tactical with the uh, information about the bolt and the specs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, the fact that it is magnetic particle inspected. I mean, the buffer tube staked, the bolt is properly staked. The fit and finish overall on the rifle is really solid. It's a better looking, it's a more uniform looking rifle than I've seen with some of the sport models, as well as a lot of other manufacturers in the game. Um, Overall, I bought this rifle to be a simple carbine, okay? It's going to have a sling on it because a sling to a rifle is a holster to a pistol. It's already got iron sights on it out of the box, so you don't need to add anything to this. You want to add it. You know, learn how to shoot irons, people. I got EOTex and Trigicons and Leupolds and this, that, and the third, but iron sights will not fail you, okay? Uh, you are failing yourself if you don't know how to run irons and or you don't even have any on your gun. So sling, irons, and a white light. I might just run a pistol light on it. In the meantime, something short, compact. That being said, it's a 16-inch gun, so... I could shoot it out four, five, six hundred yards. Maybe I do want to put like a Streamlight ProTac RL2 on there or a Surefire Scout or something to that effect. Probably be a Streamlight, a little bit of a more cheaper rifle, a uh, little bit, you know, more cheaper equipment, but something just simple. Iron sight carbine, ready to go. It's going to work. It's going to hold up. It's going to last. And it's got some higher end aspects to it. Uh, that you are, I think, gaining over some other rifles on the market, especially the Sport 2. That being said, for most people that are not out there running and gunning and training and doing drills and putting a lot of rounds through the rifle, either one would be acceptable. Again, I've had excellent luck with the Sport 2 myself, and uh, tried and true, I would bet my life to it and not feel undergunned in the least bit. If this thing is half as good as that Sport 2 was originally, uh, I think it's a solid rifle. And of course, with the things that we talked about, it's supposedly even better uh, for not that much more money. The upgrade in the furniture alone, the sights coming with the gun, not having to get them aftermarket, because the M bus is like 50, 60 bucks a piece, you know, for the for the rear sight, front sight, whatever. Um, M lock attachments out of the box, nice slings. I like that we retained the bayonet lug, that is cool. And then again, that 5R rifled barrel. So just overall, I'm impressed with it for what it is. I wanted it to be a basic rifle that I don't have to worry about, you know, batteries or this, that, and the third. Um, it's just gonna be iron sights and it's gonna work every single time. And uh, simple, reliable, don't invest too, too much money into it. Um, and, and you don't have to all the time necessarily. This doesn't have to be a BCM uh, for just, you know, if anything, here you go, freaking Uncle Joey or, or whatever, like here, here's a rifle. I know you don't have one, the zombies are coming, here's a rifle. It's not gonna have a bunch of levers and switches and buttons and fangled electronics. Uh, it's going to be a simple, easy to use carbine that can be used to defend life and liberty and that's the most important thing so i think it's a good buy for people i think it's worth a little bit of extra money over the sport but with my experience you can't go wrong with either so either way i'm gonna get this thing out i'm gonna shoot it when i can put some rounds through it i might paint it i don't know what i'm gonna do with it but basically sling light ready to fight so anyway, guys, I appreciate you being here for my long tactical tirades and digression uh, through my mediocre at best YouTube gun channel content, and that's why you guys keep coming back for more. But anyway, that's what I think. You know, again, having not put a round through it, I, I'm not mad at the money I spent on it, getting the rifle out of the box, knowing what I know now about the rifle, checking it out, and, you know, doing my own research. And uh, I think for my intended purpose, why I bought this to have a simple, no frills carbine that's going to work when I need it to work. I think it will do that and do that well. Um, you know, past experiences included, you know, this it's, I wanted that same thing again, but hey, there's a new fangled fancy model and it's not that much more money and it's better. So sign me up. Um, should have never got rid of that sport too. I had a UTG handguard on there all freaking quad railed out and stuff. It was like basically like an M4 clone. Um, 
but poverty tier, but <laughs> it worked. That thing shot, man. And hopefully this shoots much the same and perhaps even better with that 5R rifled barrel. But either way, if you guys have made it this far, very much so appreciate it. Make sure you smash that like button, share the video, comment down below. Let me know what you think, your experiences, um, whatever it may be. Go check out Sean M. Tactical. Subscribe to his channel over there. Again, he has no idea who I am. Uh, but I stumbled across his videos uh, when I was looking up stuff on this, you know, and, and just checking it out, researching the gun before I, I bought the gun and, and uh, real solid information, super way more technical than we get here. And a lot of guys like that, myself included. I'm just not that guy, unfortunately, uh, but he is. So check him out. He's got him on the bench and he's, he's making it work. So he's, he's letting you guys know all the ins and outs of the inside of these rifles and how a lot of these things are the same on the inside within a certain price point. So either way, leave it in the comment section below. Check the pin links in the comment section below, as well as any of the links in the description box below, especially those first three. Those first three links are there to help you fight for your God-given, inalienable, constitutionally protected and reaffirmed, but inherent by birth gun rights. I don't get anything for it, no kind of kickback or commission. I just believe in them. Believe in them. FPC, GOA, ISRA, if you're specifically out of Illinois fighting behind enemy lines uh, in this communist shithole state that we live in. But either way, we still got these, and uh, I'm personally never giving them up, so I'll always have it. Hopefully you follow suit. Anyway, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Check all the links. Check me out on all my other social media. And uh, until next time, remember...